Hey guys, it's Bob Morreale here with The Tuning School, and on today's Tech Tuesday, we've got part two of our drag racing mini series for beginners. And today we're specifically talking about your time slip and how to understand every part of it. So stick around. Hey guys, welcome back. So what we're gonna do is get started by going through the time slip and we're gonna relate it to tuning so you understand kind of what does it mean for your car and then in the tuning side of things, how can you do things to improve as well? So let's start at the very top of your time slip. Now the first thing you're gonna get is what's called the RT or the reaction time. Now the reaction time, depending on the type of tree you use or the type of light as, I, as it was set up, will reflect a number all the way down to zero. So what that means is if you cut a very perfect reaction time, meaning when you left, the car was moving and the light turned green, it would be zeros, which would be perfect. You can also see a negative number. I've done that plenty of times. It's called red lighting. When you red light, that means that you left before the light turned green and it'll show a negative number beside the RT for the reaction time. That means you lost. So you didn't win, you lost automatically. So that's just how that works. Now, reaction time, really important. We get a lot of people asking about this. It has no effect on your uh, ET. Uh, so understand this. You don't have a 10 second car because it took you five extra seconds to launch, okay? <laughs> the timer doesn't start until you begin accelerating. So the light can turn green. You could sit there for five seconds if you want. It's not gonna affect your ET or mile per hour. It doesn't start timing until you cross the beams, until you start the beams, which means that reaction time is really a measurement of driver. Okay, so understand that. Your goal as a good driver is to make it so that you understand at what point in the yellow bulb, the very last yellow bulb before it turns green, you need to leave. If I'm in a powerful car, I'm going to leave a little bit later in the yellow bulb. And guys that are really good at drag racing, they can actually see the different shades of the bulb. So as the bulb begins to illuminate in different shades of yellow, and then begins to dissipate and turn to the next bulb, which is green, people that are pros can really pick that out. They can almost slow it down in their mind and see it. Talk to the pros about it, they'll tell you the same thing. Unless the tree's been changed to like an LED or something, but that's a little more difficult. So, uh, now that you understand reaction time, let's go down to the next step. This is where it starts to actually have to do with your car and your ability to launch the car as a driver. This is where you, the driver, have the most input here, okay? So the 60 foot mark is the first thing we see here, 60 foot mark, that is measured in seconds. Now, I would say an average 60 foot time for a rear wheel drive car on street tires is somewhere in the low twos, which means it takes you about two seconds to get from the line to 60 feet. Now, why is this important? This is super important because for every 10th of a second, for every 10th of a second you improve in the 60 foot, that doubles or triples on down the line. So that means that if you improve your 60 foot from a 2.2 to a 2.1, you can expect double that on the big end, which means your ET will go down two or three tenths if you improve it one tenth. And the reason for that is drag racing is super critical about the launch. Your job as the driver is to get that car moving. That does not mean spinning tires. And also, since we're on the subject, that does not mean lifting the wheels for you guys with super powerful cars. Yeah, it's super cool, we love YouTube videos, but here's the problem. Think about this, if you launch the car and it hooks, and instead of going forward, it puts that energy into lifting the front end, that is wasted energy. That's energy that should have been used to drive the car forward. So the goal of every good drag racer with a super powerful car is not to lift the wheels, is to only get enough weight transfer to get the weight from the front of the car to the back of the car. Why? To get the weight on those back tires so they'll stick and not anymore. So that's super, super important. What can you do to improve your 60 foot time? Lots of things. Number one, driver, quit screwing with everything. If you're a beginner and work on you, learn your car. Does your car launch perfectly right off idle? Stab it right off idle. Does it need a little RPM to get that perfect launch without spinning? Figure out what that number is. Maybe it's 1200 RPM, maybe it's 1500, but maybe once you reach 1600 RPM, you spin the tires and your, and your 60 foot time goes awful. Your job is to improve you, the driver, first. Now, once you've done that and you know what the car will take, then you can start messing with the car. Now, on the suspension side, there's a lot of components you can get from great manufacturers to improve how the car launches. In addition to that, tires. So you've got what? Street tires, you have drag radials, you have slicks, you have a pretty good assortment. You're still going to have to put the human factor back into that. 
If you move away from street tires and you move to a drag radial, what tire pressure do they like? Because each brand's a little different. And then also, not just that, what type of burnout do they like? A lot of people look over this because they just want to go and do a massive burnout and back up and try and launch, and the tires are greasy because they overheated them in the burnout. So your job is to understand, maybe I need to test them with a light burnout and see how they stick. And then maybe I'll be a little more aggressive and see at what point do they break loose. So a lot of drag racing has to do with you. Even though you buy the best stuff, the customers that we find that still go the slowest refuse to fix the human element because that fixes everything or screws up everything. So 60 foot time, we've discussed that pretty well. Now, what can you do on the tuning side to fix the 60 foot time? 60 foot time is greatly affected by torque management. If you've taken any of our courses, even a beginner's course, we talk about torque management. The factory's job is to dampen that power out of the hole so you don't ruin an axle and put a warranty claim in. Your job as a drag racer is what? The polar opposite. And if you twist an axle, that's okay, you're gonna replace it. But torque management has a huge impact on that 60 foot time because that dampens the power to get you moving. All right, so your 60 foot is typically all about first gear, okay? So if you can get the air fuel and the spark set perfectly, which is hard to do on the dyno, okay guys? So you guys will get a dyno tune. Doesn't mean it's gonna be great at the drag strip necessarily. You need to make sure that you data log it. Watch the air fuel, watch the spark. Watch your torque management. Make sure that when you launch, you get full throttle. You get the spark advance you command and the fuel to be correct. So 60 foot, all about that first gear. Get the car moving on down the drag strip. Super critical part. Now, if you look on down, your time slip further, you've got 330 foot mark, which in our case, we had our bone stock Dodge Charger RT 5.7, and it was doing a 5.7 second 330 mark. Tells you a lot about your shifts, okay? Your first couple of shifts are typically included in that range. So if you have sloppy shifts going on the two to three or the three to four, depending on your transmission, you'll see it reflected here. You might pick up a couple of tenths by fixing the shifting in the tune, okay? Shift firmness, shift pressure, shift time. All these things are super critical when you're looking for a great quarter mile ET. Now, next thing you're gonna find is your eighth mile. So in this case, the Dodge ran an 8.8 eight, uh, at 80 miles an hour. It was okay, it was a reasonable time considering the ultimate quarter mile was 13.6 and 102. Everything adds up, but again, this talks about the torque of that engine. This is the first eighth mile of the drag strip. A lot of this has to do with getting the car moving. Now, as you transition down to the last half or the big end of the quarter mile, you have the 1,000 foot and your quarter mile and your mile per hour. These all talk about measurements along the way on the top end. So how is the engine pulling at the higher RPMs, at the higher gears? This is actually reflective of your horsepower side of your dyno chart. So if you look at the dyno chart, is my horsepower rolling off early? Well, if that's the case, then maybe I need to not shift so late. So that's you as the driver experimenting with those shift points to determine what is it that's going to get me the best thousand foot or quarter mile and mile per hour. Now the last two, quarter mile, time, 13.6 in our case, mile per hour, 102, bone stock Dodge Charger RT. That tells you a lot. This is actually a reasonable car, making reasonable power, and it's a good car to get started with if you're a beginner in drag racing. But that last couple bits tells you a lot. Is the engine dying on the top end? Do I need to do something to improve the performance on the top end? So since we're here, let's do a quick comparison. I already told you what it ran stock. It ran a 13.6 and 102 stock. Now we took the same car and we performed a couple upgrades. We did uh, cam and we did headers. And then we tuned it, of course, went back to the drag strip, and to keep things equal, we kept the same tires on the car, the same street tires. So if you look at our numbers, we're gonna go ahead and do a quick comparison. Our 60 foot time, 201 versus a 206, those are pretty much virtually identical. Um, so the 60 foot didn't affect the rest of this run. But if you look at the next mark, you can see where things really start to get different because the car is now making much more power. You look at the 60 foot and then the 330, excuse me, the 330 at 330 feet, we're only running a 5.5 versus a 5.7 second time to 330 feet. We've already cut off two tenths of a second there. Remember what I said, that'll reflect a lot on the big end, so keep watching. Now you get to the eighth mile. So the modded charger, our charger is now running an 838 at 88 miles an hour instead of an 886 at 80. That's a huge difference. It's picked up eight miles per hour in the eighth. So. It's picked up a ton of that mid-range torque that we talked about earlier. So it has a lot to do with the fact that we got a decent cam that's not super lazy. Okay, so the last part here, we have our thousand at a thousand feet. We did it in 10.82 seconds versus 11.4. And then on the big end, we ran a 12.87 at 110 versus a 13.6 
at 102, picking up eight miles per hour. That is huge. So the gains were pretty, pretty big for cam and headers. So using this and understanding this, now you can go back and say, well, where am I struggling? Is my car great in the first eighth of a mile, but does it fall off on the big end? A good example of that was our Buick Grand National. The car ran an amazing 1176, but only at 115 miles per hour. You contrast that with our Turbo Trans Am LS1 car. It ran the same ET, but at 126 miles per hour. That tells you a lot. The Grand National was real strong in the first eighth, and then it died off. The Trans Am was not that strong because it was a little bit lazy, and then it came on hard on the top end. So we hope this, this information was a little bit helpful to you and then maybe you can go a little quicker and a little faster your next time out on the drag strip. So for more high performance tuning knowledge, be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on social media. And as always, stay tuned. If y'all enjoyed this video, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, check out these other awesome videos, as well as these products and our website.